Social Studies World History 2. Identify the major achievements of Chinese and Indian societies to 500 CE or AD. Explain how geography contributed to the movement of people and ideas. Include Silk Roads and Indian Ocean Trade. In 1877, German traveler and geographer Ferdinand von Richthofen coined the phrase Silk Road or Silk Routes to describe the pathways of overland and water routes that connected societies across the Eastern Hemisphere between the formal opening of trade by the Han Chinese in 353 BCE BC until the abrupt closure of those routes by the Ottoman Empire in 1453 AD CE. The early origins of these routes probably began as simply as overland trade between Egypt and Mesopotamia across the Sinai Peninsula or via harbors along the Red Sea which linked to modern-day Saudi Arabia and the riches of ancient Mesopotamia. Further explorations down the coast of Africa enabled the Egyptians to establish trade relationships with their neighbors Nubia and Kush. In time, Indian traders would push west along the coasts of modern-day Pakistan, Iran, Oman, and Yemen and establish the foundations of Indian Ocean water routes linking Asia with Africa. The sailing technologies available to those early mariners centered primarily on the use of the Tao and the accurate interpretation of the Indian Ocean monsoon winds. Two very different wind patterns seasonally affected the region. The northeasterly monsoon was described as dry and consistent and sailors could rely on predictable arrival times at Muscat and Aden in Yemen and Surat and Calicut in India. However, miscalculate the departure from eastern ports and travel will be plagued by the frequent storms and strong winds of the southwesterly monsoon which predictably hit in the summer months of June, July, and August. Miscalculation of these wind patterns could prove deadly. The earliest composite description of Indian Ocean trade routes can be found in the Periplus of the Iridian or Red Sea. This document contains a descriptive catalog of trade goods that could be procured from ports along the Red Sea, coast of Africa, Persian Gulf, and Indian Ocean, and was written around 60 AD or CE. The document was written in Greek, and the unknown author describes himself only as a citizen of Alexandria. Plotting the locations mentioned within the Periplus has yielded a wealth of knowledge about the types of items that were traded, the locations where they could be obtained, and often driving directions related to wind patterns and geographic features along the routes. For example, unique spices could be had from modern-day Somalia and India, and wine was available from ports throughout the Mediterranean, Arabia, and Persia. From Persia, one could also obtain gold, and other precious metals and woven cloth came from India. Africa yielded ivory, and Arabia offered aromatic flowers for perfume. Dissemination of this valuable list and information related to ports of call led to the initiation of Roman-Indian trade relationships during the first century AD or CE, as well as firmly establishing Western demand for Eastern trade goods across European markets for the next 1300 years. Alternatively, land routes eventually linked the ancient Chinese Han Dynasty to the consumers of the Roman Empire. The origins of silk routes through Persia date to at least 500 to 330 BCE or BC and the Achaemenid Empire. The Persian Royal Road ran from Susa in modern-day Iran to the Mediterranean Sea at ancient Constantinople or Istanbul in modern-day Turkey. The Persians established postal stations along the route where messengers or angarium could obtain mules and fresh horses in an early version of the American West Pony Express. The Greek historian Herodotus described the system by saying, There is nothing in the world that travels faster than these Persian couriers. Neither snow nor rain nor heat nor darkness of night prevents these couriers from completing their designated stages with utmost speed. The words of Herodotus would later be appropriated by Harvard professor George Herbert Palmer as he developed the motto of the American Postal Service. In 139 BC or BCE, 
Chang Shan was ordered to the Western District of China by the Han Emperor in an attempt to develop alliances that could prove effective against the Zhanu, or Huns, who were continually harassing merchants and negatively impacting efforts toward east-west trade. Shan was captured and imprisoned twice for a total of 11 years by the Zhanu before he effectively escaped and reported back to Han Emperor Wu Di about the feasibility of an overland route to the west. Because of his persistent efforts, Shan is credited with establishing the official Silk Road that would link Chinese goods to trade along the Persian Royal Road and eventually to markets in the Mediterranean. To cement their interest in a mutually beneficial trade agreement, the first Roman emissary arrived in 166 AD or CE, with additional contacts occurring in 226 and 284 AD or CE. During this period, the Han intensified their trade efforts by increasing security along the route. Due to the hostile and remote desert conditions of portions of the Silk Road throughout western China and Persia, the transport of goods was reliably perilous. Bandits plagued the region and made group travel imperative. Once the terrain shifted to the vast deserts of Persia, the cargoes of spices, silk, and other eastern goods were transferred to camels due to their enhanced adaptations to arid conditions. Merchants joined with other groups and formed caravans through the desert. Along these routes, way stations emerged where weary travelers could pause to rest and refresh or perhaps sell their cargo for a tidy profit, and make their ways back towards the east to repeat the process. Many of these stations, or caravanserai, developed into permanent settlements and eventually became thriving cosmopolitan cities where culture, language, religion, and customs were disseminated. Goods changed hands many times across these vast and dangerous trade routes and with every exchange, the middlemen added a bit more to the price as reimbursement for their time and trouble. Examples of goods that flowed from east to west include silk, tea, dyes, precious stones, china such as plates, bowls, cups, and vases, porcelain, spices such as cinnamon and ginger, medicine, perfumes, ivory, rice, paper, and gunpowder. From west to east, these goods included horses, saddles and riding equipment, grape vines and wine-making techniques, dogs and other domesticated pets, animal furs and skins, honey, fruits, glassware, woolen blankets, rugs and carpets, woven textiles, gold and silver, camels, slaves, weapons and armor. By 476 and the fall of the western portion of the Roman Empire, the demand for eastern goods in Europe and for western goods in the east was firmly entrenched. An even more significant increase in the price of trade goods accompanied the emergence and establishment of Islam throughout the portion of the route that passed through Persia, beginning around 632 with the death of the Prophet Muhammad and the subsequent establishment of the first Islamic Caliphate. Both religious and economic tensions had intensified with the ascendance of Constantinople as the continuation of Roman culture and the adoption of Christianity as the official religion of the Byzantine Empire. Hostilities related to differences in religious practice became firmly entrenched and resulted in the Crusades, a series of holy wars fought for the control of Jerusalem, a site sacred to both Christians and Muslims, as well as control of the profitable western trade centers of the Silk Road between 1095 to 1291. Though little was actually resolved by these Crusades, one byproduct was the increase in distrust between the Muslim and Christian worlds. With the sack of Constantinople in 1453, the western end of the Silk Road would subsequently be controlled by the Muslim Ottoman Empire. As a result of this victory, the overland routes of the Silk Road were essentially closed and firmly under Islamic control. 
the shock waves caused by the sudden drop in the availability of eastern goods would prompt Portugal to pursue an all-water route around Africa to India in 1488 with the voyage of Bartholomew Diaz, and to persevere until the successfully completed round-trip mission of Vasco da Gama in 1498. With the completion of da Gama's trip, the monopoly of the Ottomans was effectively broken, and water routes around Africa, with mariners linking to the established markets of Africa and India, became the new conduit through which eastern goods would reach western markets. <laughs>